every single market I go to, from the smallest to the largest. Everybody we meet with, from the auto mechanic to the bank manager, has a computer sitting right on their desk. And as much as you guys know, you know, and as much as it still freaks me out, everybody I know has a Facebook page. So that is, I mean, my parents have a Facebook page. This is wrong on so many levels. <laughs> um, you know, that is a true testament to the fact that online has taken over and it is pervasive. It is not just, you know, the college crowd or, you know, the high school crowd. These are people that when they want to find something, they Google it. And so this is your audience, just, you know, like we're showing here. Hey, Christy, it's Jill. And hey, Jill. Um, the slide, I think it was slide six, where it said 82% of the U.S. households. I like that slide, but where would we reference it from? Um, I should have been on there if it wasn't. I'm pretty sure it's either Burrell or Bell and Steady. I'll go back and I'll find out and I'll shoot you a copy of it with the sourcing. Okay. It's a good, it's a good slide to have when you're, you know, in an act or something like that. Yeah, I mean, any, any of this can be used as great ammunition during the sales process. And any yeah. of you guys that want this, um, David has it. It's on Google Docs today, so you can yeah. go there and download it, pick off the slides if you like. Yeah, that's why I didn't have a tag like your previous okay. one. Okay. It, it might have gotten just um, erased when I'm it off. Well, I'll find it for you, and I'll send you the sort of thing. Okay, thanks. Yep, and as you guys can see, I mean, this is the projection for this year, so if you look where we're at, we were at in 2004, where we are at now, if you look at a percentage of growth of any market, um, especially in this economy, the percentage of growth that we're still seeing it online and it is not slowing down, there's no question that this is where the dollars are being spent. You know, a great thing that you guys can use in your markets, you know, that have been hit hard by the economy is you can really use, you know, the economy and ad pricing on this to your advantage. If you're already losing print or if you've got people that were only doing your business builder package before and now they've pulled out, you can go back in with online as a viable substitute for them. You know, the thing that we always preach because we know it works is, you know, size and frequency. But as you guys know, you know, for a lot of the Main Street type businesses, the mom and pops, or even the ones that are just feeling the squeeze, size and frequency can get expensive and they might not have the dollars, so they're pulling back. What we can offer as a viable alternative is online because size and frequency is built in. It's sort of the great equalizer. A big company can buy a leaderboard, and so can a mom and pop. And if it's 250, it's 250 for whoever buys it. The ads, you know, a run of site, which gives them a huge amount of appeal, gives them, a, on most of your sites, I should say, gives them a much broader demographic. They're hitting a vast amount of eyes, randomly rotating through most sections 24-7 for an entire month with an ad in full color with a link to their website or to their print ad or both. And for some of you guys, you know, say charging two, two hundred, two hundred and fifty, two hundred and seventy-five dollars a month for that, I don't even think there's anything in print we could touch at all in black and white that gave them that much reach and frequency for two hundred and fifty dollars a month. So if you guys are back up against it and people are using price as the objection, this is the answer. The main thing that we have to show them is that you know we will service this just like we would with print. The key to this, as you guys know, is that just like with the print ad, it has to be current, it has to be relevant, and it has to be changed to be effective. We have to start really being, you know, almost like a consultant or an ad agency type to our client, just like we would for print. But I know for a lot of you guys that come from that end of it, they don't always see online like that. You know, in, in the beginning, people would hand you a business card and say, yeah, that's great, you know, put my business logo online. You know, well, we know that does nothing for them except reinforce the fact that it doesn't work. So when you sit down with these folks, whether it be for print, online, inserts, sit down and consult with them on, you know, like you would usually on, what is your goal? Okay, is this an image campaign? Is this a call to action campaign? Because then also from there, we can manage their expectations. The expectation of a click-through or a lot more foot traffic from an image campaign, just like you guys know in print, is going to be a lot less than if we do a call to action campaign. And so by sitting down and working with them to find out what their goal is, we can manage their expectations and then make whatever type of campaign we work with them successful.
And then hopefully what I hope most of you are doing is going in with a print online bundle. You know, and if you don't have one, we can easily create one for you. Basically, then you're their total media buy. Okay. And this is something that you guys can definitely use. This is from Braille, you know, to put in your back pockets when they talk about yellow pages or radio or billboards or any of your other competition. Internet advertising has now surpassed all of those. And so for as many people as I've heard, like I said, you know, 12, 13, 14 years ago saying that Internet was a fad and that it was just for the tech heads and all of that, it is pretty much the top one to two predominant media in this country. Um, some of these um, are slides from what we showed you the last time, but we'll just do a quick refresher. And a lot of this you guys already know, you know, why does online advertising work for your newspapers? A lot of it, like I say, it, you're selling on the same strength and the same pitch, in essence, that you would for your print. That you've been there, you've got the most trusted brand, you're the most visited site in the community. You have dynamic or updated content with breaking news that typically, with a lot of you, you're the only game in town for. You typically, by having the highest readership in town, basically you have the most sets of eyes looking at you, which is really what they're buying. So instead of buying circulation, they're buying readership. Same thing. And that you already have a sales staff that most of them know, hopefully have a relationship with, or if they don't, if even if they're new, that's somebody they know that when they sell them that online ad, if they've got a problem, they can come to them. They've got a brick and mortar place they can walk into and get their concerns addressed. <laughs> and then this is from the last time. So any what I always try to preach to you guys is that any rep can sell online. So you don't have you can have an online rep and print reps, but typically, you know, if you're going in to see the client anyway, just like you would for your print product, you probably know how to sell a double truck, you know, frontwards, backways, and sideways. Know your technology, you know, know your numbers. You know, you guys have three basic ad sizes. Have it with you. That way, if it's something that you think can work, this is one more thing in your arsenal that you can sell them. It doesn't have to be that you know it backwards and forward. Just get your basics down. Know how it could work for that client, depending on what they've told you they're looking for. This is just a quick review of the blitz process that most of you guys know, and you guys do several times a year now. And, you know, the name of the game is preparing, and, of course, appointments, appointments, appointments. Um, hopefully getting new stuff in front of them every time we come out. The goal every year isn't to just resell the same clients. It's to upsell them, bring new types of media and ads that we've seen working to them, you know, do away with stuff we've seen not, get anything we can in front of them to keep it current and relevant. And then basically work ourselves to the bone during that week or two weeks, hit as many prospects as we possibly can, and sell as much into your online editions as we possibly can. Um, these are just some stats from some of the recent ones I visited, say, over the last four to six months. Um, and as you can see, you know, varying sizes of papers, but every single one of these was an absolute success. This was more money than they had before. You know, it was in signed contracts, and, they, and we did this within the one-week sales period time. Um, Pierre and Steve, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I think the year before, or two years before, I think during the Blitz, we only did something around... 20 or 21,000, it might have even been less, to come back a year later and to do this, it really just shows the testament it, as if you all do what I tell you. <laughs> and don't let me drive you crazy with, you know, beating you over the head with the appointments. It really can pay off. Can we pause just for a second? Uh, sure. Steve or April, are either one of you on the call? Uh, Could one of you share why you ended up with the greatest amount of sales, what the technique or our, our sales uh, practice are you guys using in Pure that helped Christy that everybody could learn from next week as we do the Blitz for across WIC? I think the biggest thing was having the appointment set and meeting with the decision makers following up. <coughs> I also think, David, we do a good job of follow-up after the sale. And how do you describe that? We're constantly in contact with our advertisers, whether it's in print or online, 